In a world of shadows and danger, a fearsome beast lurks in the depths of the wilderness. A group of fearless hunters embarks on a perilous quest, armed only with their muskets and lanterns, to confront the ultimate challenge. But the bear guards its domain with ruthless determination. With cunning and strategy, they lay a deadly trap, hoping to outwit the monstrous foe. But when the bear's rage is awakened, there's no escape. Bullets fly, and the battle unfolds in the heart of darkness. Your time has come. Lights out. The Wilderness of Empire Clash has always been a chilling and unforgiving place. However, with this next update, we are greatly expanding on the content for the Hunter Class and making the Frontier much more engaging. I'm here with the development team, and we're going to answer a few questions about the upcoming update. What's up guys? So to start this off, what are some of the new changes coming to hunting in this new update? The hunting skill tree is fully equipped with skills that will turn you into a seasoned frontiersman. There are three primary branches of the tree, hunting enhancements, frontier skills, and campsite creation. The hunting enhancements on the left side of the tree will have skills that boost your hunting yields and unlock additional activities like fishing. The middle part of the tree has a focus on more military aspects of your class, allowing you to be an effective guerrilla fighter and scout. Lastly, the campsite side of the tree allows you to construct campsites and upgrades. More on campsites will be covered later in the devlog. So, can I expect any new animals to be coming in this update? Absolutely. Two new animals, in fact. Cave bears and rabbits. Cave bears are ferocious, predatory animals that live in four different caves throughout the map. Each cave will provide a different kind of challenge. Facing the bear head-on will be an arduous task, as the bear can take a lot of punches and punch back even harder. Those who slay it successfully well, will be rewarded with plenty of bear pelts, which can be used for new cosmetics. On the other hand, those able to avoid the bear's wrath and make it to the end will be rewarded with plenty of loot. Of course, though, make a wrong step, and there's no going back. If you're looking for thrilling and intense gameplay, well, the rabbit's probably not it. Similar to the deer, rabbits roam around various areas of the map, which can be killed for meat and hide. Unlike the deer, though, rabbits will run away to the burrows if you get too close, so you better have good aim with your rifle. Uh, speaking of deer, they too have received an update, including better flying mechanics and new models and animations. So I noticed there were traps listed on the skill tree. How do those work, and what are they used for? Hunters have acquired some new equipment this update. Hunting small game like rabbits is now possible with snare traps. Because rabbits are very small targets and will run to their burrows when threatened, snare traps are the most practical way to catch them. I recommend placing these traps in places where rabbits typically travel to increase the odds of a catch. When a rabbit runs to the snare, they will be snatched up and gently put to sleep. Check your snares often because a delicious rabbit could be awaiting your retrieval. A not so cuddly creature lies in the depths. Slaying the beast is a daunting task for hunters without the use of a bear trap. Bears lurk in the mines below Stone Tonus. Placing bear traps in their dens is your best chance to catch them. Just beware of startling them before getting your trap set up. Bear traps are not lethal to players. Alright, so I've got this random stick and string in my inventory. What can I do with this? Fishing is a brand new mechanic added in the game for getting meat. To fish, simply equip your rod and head to a body of water. Watch the bobber until you start seeing water splashing around it. Then, click your mouse and reel in your rod to get the fish. Catches from fishing can also include resources like driftwood, or even worthless seaweed. Oceans and rivers have different types of yields, so try out different fishing spots to see what you get. Raw fish can be cooked at the campfires into cooked fish, just like meat.
Wow, that's a cool looking camp system. How will hunters build camps in this upcoming update? Camps will be able to be built like any other deployable in game. Once you build it, you'll be able to spawn there with a five minute cooldown, which can be reduced to two minutes by placing tents around your campsite. Plus, you'll be able to toggle whether or not you want to allow teammates to spawn there. There'll also be several other things that you can build around your campfire, including a portable tanning station, seats and lock boxes which can be used to store meat your campfire will be able to be upgraded to allow you to cook fish meat and antler stew which is a new powerful but rare food item that you can make from deer antlers sometimes i get really frustrated when i'm trying to command the bacons to run my empire what kind of changes are coming to empire management in this update we've heard you all loud and clear about how frustrating it is to deal with trolls in your empire to help combat this, we've added two brand new anti-sabotage systems to the game. The first is a brand new election menu. In the previous version of the game, you would only see the name of the player up for election. This often led to uninformed votes and resulted in bad monarchs winning elections. Instead, the new system will put the candidate and the current monarch head to head. A few of their stats will be shown, like their class level and their time on the team. This way, players can make a more educated decision on who they vote for. Tired of stupid noobs opening your gates during the siege? Well, with the brand new automatic gate permissions menu, miners can take gate permissions into their own hands. Several criteria can be set as a minimum requirement for a player to have gate permissions. If a player does not meet these requirements, their gate permissions will automatically be removed. However, you can still manually set gate permissions like the old system if you choose to. Players with manually set permissions will override any automatic controls. When I play as a merchant, it always feels so lonely outside the capital. Is that changing in the next update? Yes, similar to how the defensive cannons work, merchants will now be able to build stalls inside the capital at pre-selected locations. So during an enemy siege, you'll be able to sell much needed weapons when the shop stocks runs out. Or you could sell popcorn for 7,000 coins a bucket. Uh, the choice is yours. Good stuff. Alright, so to wrap this up, is there any other improvements you want the community to know about? There have been a couple new improvements for you combat-focused stone toners out there. Wall guards are now jumping with joy for the new airlock gate peaks. Finally, players can board a roleplay at the gate and interrogate peasant spies before letting them enter. These peaks also give defenders better angles on attackers trying to break in. Additionally, We've added a complete overhaul to our back-end combat controlling system. While newer players may not notice these changes, older players will definitely feel that combat is somewhat smoother than this update. Additionally, the long-lasting bug where muskets would sometimes instantly fire when being aimed is fixed. You will now be able to aim your muskets with ease, knowing that you are in full control of when it fires and when it doesn't. So, that's it for the update. Thank you so much for watching. The team and I would love to hear your thoughts and feedback in the comments below. And, as always, we hope to see you soon on the battlefields of Stone Tonus.